Alright you guys. Make sure you like and dislike. Make sure you leave them comments. And don't be a hater. If you follow my videos, hit the subscribe button. Alright you guys. This fight right here between Luis Ortiz and Deontay Wilder is going to be a very good fight. But if any of these top four things happen to Luis Ortiz, it's going to be his worst fucking nightmare. That's right. You guys didn't think that I had nightmares for Wilder. And I didn't have shit in store for Luis Ortiz. You got me fucked up. With that being said, let me tell you guys this, man. Let me just start off with an honorable mention. I think Deontay Wilder got a jab that is highly underestimated. Not only that, Wilder is fast and tall. So him going at Luis Ortiz with them fast ass jabs could definitely offset him. Think about it. Who the fuck has Luis Ortiz faced that's as fast and powerful as Wilder? Nobody. So if both of these guys is faithless, it's gonna face something new come fight night. That being said, let's get to number four. Number motherfucking four. You know, Luis Ortiz being a southpaw. Let me explain why. Because being a southpaw is like a gift and a curse. Yes, it's a rare style. Yes, your punch is coming from the left side. Your power punch is coming from the left side. And that's a good thing. But a lot of southpaws have trouble with people who love to throw the straight right hand. That's Deontay Wilder. Why just that? Because you being the southpaw and your power punch is on the left hand side, when you throw that power punch, you're running right into the orthodox stance. You're running right into that fucking right hand, y'all. Whenever you decide to throw that left hand, that left straight. And we know that left straight is coming. And Luis Ortiz like to throw the left straight to the body as well. I could see Deontay Wilder landing a clean ass straight right, straight down the pipe. With that being said, you guys, yes, being a southpaw is a gift. But it also can be a curse, especially to somebody who loves to throw the straight right hand. And that's Wilder. That being said, let's get to number three. Number motherfucking three. The psychological aspect of Deontay Wilder's power. See, Deontay Wilder has the type of power that can make you not want to hop in the pocket so easily. It can make you not want to engage so easily. Shit. It can also make you not want to throw punches. Now, don't get it twisted. I think Luis Ortiz will throw punches, but Wilder got the type of power that will make you stay outside. And that's a fact. Not to mention, to add Frost on top of the cake, Luis Ortiz just went to Wilder's last fight against the Vern. And let me tell you this. That knockout looked scary on TV, didn't it? Just imagine in person watching it. And Luis Ortiz has some good front row seats. With that being said, I'm letting you guys know right now, y'all. 
it's a big possibility Luis Ortiz going into this fight could go in for his worst nightmare. So I, I really do feel like he cannot let Wilder's power and him sending guys out on a stretcher get him to a point where he doesn't really want to commit or engage like that. You guys, let's not act like that shit is possible. Because that shit is definitely possible. That being said, let's get into number two. Number motherfucking two. And I always try to tell people this. Deontay Wilder has that type of power where he carries it late. Deontay Wilder could basically stop you at any time of the fight. He stopped people in the 12th. He stopped people in the 11th. He, he has a couple late round stoppages. And let me tell you guys this. This is the reason this is number two on my list. Because one thing I know about Luis Ortiz, he does kind of gas, yo. Wilder don't gas. Wilder has a gas tank. Now, Luis Ortiz, his gas tank is not terrible, but it definitely is not good as Wilder. And that could play a factor into this fight. So, being that Wilder can carry his power late, it doesn't help with Luis Ortiz getting tired. And that's a fact. So, Luis, Luis Ortiz better have that gas tank on 10. Come fight night. That being said, let's get into number one. Number motherfucking one. And let me tell you guys this. Number two leads me to number one because not only does Wilder has that power where he can stop you late, he got the type of power where he can stop you in the first round. Same way he did Bermain Stavern. And Bermain Stavern, regardless of what you want to say about Stavern, the man got a chin. And he was sleep against Wilder. So, would you really be surprised if Luis Ortiz went to sleep in the first round? I wouldn't. It would be no surprise if the right hand connected and Luis Ortiz went to bed early. It won't be no surprise. Another reason this is number one. There's so many reasons this is number one. It's because that's the worst way to lose a fight. Think about it. If you go to distance with a fighter, it ain't that bad. Yeah, it's a loss, but it ain't that bad. Even if you get knocked out late, you can say you got tired and etc etc but getting knocked out in the first fucking round is very hard to bounce back from that ask Bermain to burn especially ugly you was talking all that shit call Wilder a bitch and everything just to go to sleep in the first round that's the worst way to lose that's why that's number one on my list. Alright, y'all. I'm out.